Bitcoin is worthless artificial gold. I think I should say modestly that I think the whole damn development is disgusting and contrary to the interests of civilization. This is just a beanie baby that runs on coal. You know, I, I, I agree. I would, I would short it if there was an easy way to do it. These men all share one thing in common. They are all citizens of advanced economies with property rights, free speech, a functioning legal system, and stable reserve currencies. Only 13% of our planet's population is born into this. Is there any chance for a deal in these talks today between Russia and Ukraine? The other 87% are born in a country with a weak currency or authoritarian regime. These critiques are missing the big picture. Anyone with access to the internet can participate in Bitcoin. It runs on a network that does not discriminate. While Western headlines focus on Coinbase going public and tech bros getting fabulously rich, more than double the company's valuation with there is a revolution happening worldwide. For Gates, Munger, and Buffett, Bitcoin is like poison squared. The price, it's above 50,000 now. Where do you think it's going? But for Ira from Nigeria, Mo from Sudan, and Carl from Ethiopia, Bitcoin is much more. I'm hopeful for Nigeria's future. I've seen Bitcoin's potential firsthand. Bitcoin allowed us to fight SARS, a notorious unit of the Nigerian police with a long record of abuses. In October 2020, I joined the Feminist Coalition, which began accepting donations via Flutterwave, a fintech product. This started off well enough, but then the regime started cracking down. Our bank accounts were shuttered. Bitcoin was the only option left. There was no other way to receive, store, and spend money. This was an eye-opening moment. We ended up setting up a BTC Pay server to process donations from around the world. But Ira isn't the only one with hope for the future. For Kalkasa in Ethiopia, Bitcoin is about bridging the gap between the upper and lower classes in a corrupt system. Wages do grow, but not on par with inflation. Salaries in urban areas have perhaps doubled over the past decade, but goods have gone up by three to five times. The upper classes use the dollar as their unit of account, but the poor outside the city, well, dollars are officially illegal for them. Kassar's brother was arrested for simply having a $20 bill in his pocket, but the arrest wasn't enough to stop Carl. I created a telegram group where I pay freelancers, graphic designers, and translators based in Ethiopia with Bitcoin. In America, most people treat Bitcoin as an investment or as a savings account, but here I'm using it as a medium of exchange. It's part of my life. Under the gold standard, Sudan was a stable economy. Three Sudanese pound once bought you a dollar. There was a successful middle class in Khartoum. But what happened after that in the 1960s and the 70s, and continue to happen until today, is that the central bank is taking over and devaluing the currency. Today the inflation is more than 400%. The average citizen is watching their wages stagnate and the cost of living is rising. While Omar al-Bashir and his cronies managed to accumulate massive wealth in form of real estate and bank accounts in foreign banks, what Mo describes is the Kantian effect, a systemic plague wherein those closest to the source of the inflation profit, while the rest suffer. Many Sudanese people are starting to use Bitcoin as a tool to escape corruption and as a lifeboat to survive this economic crisis. Now that is not something I think the world needs. There is something inherently not credible about creating hundreds of billions in virtual wealth with nothing ever actually being accomplished. Bill Gates. Charlie Munger. Warren Buffett. They don't like the technology behind Bitcoin because it's coming to seize a place in the global stage that they used to have just for themselves. Liberation technologies should be invested in, not charted. And for those comfortable in the dollar bubble, it's time to check your financial privilege.